I'm Roger Tabor and I'm a biologist, a cat biologist, somebody who looks at where cats go, whether it's nighttime, daytime. So what is the secret lives of cats? Well, it's really two things. One, it's this film that you're watching to enable you to look at what's happening and what we've been seeing through the cat's eyes. And it's also a report where you can see more detail, the work we've done on them and being able to monitor them as they've moved around. How have we been able to do that? This is a GPS tracker that enable us to see something like this. All you're looking at is with the real world and over that you'll see the track where the cat has gone. We've also had this bit of kit. It hangs just around the cat and it's a cat cam. So as our cat wanders around, for the first time we can see what the cat sees and where it goes and we can put them together and that's really what the secret life of the cat is all about. One of the fascinating things that has come out with this survey is that we're finding that cats tend to avoid, in their ranges, being anywhere near busy roads. Why would they do that? Well, if you think about it, there's lots of movement, there's lots of disturbance. So look at the ranges and you begin to understand how your cat is leading its life. There's a, a quite a main road outside. We definitely don't want him going out the front, but obviously the survey shows us wrong. Maxwell is quite skinny and a bit sort of rough around the edges. Milo's our cat. There's a lot of cats around this area, but he seems to protect his territory. He's a little bit of a killer as well. This is Sid, and Sid is six years old. He, he seems to like men rather than women. Morton, our cat, is four years old. Our house is in the middle of a farm, and it's a working farm. He doesn't really fit in with the rest of the farm cats, so he got a couple of duffings, actually, a bit of fighting going on and a few nasty injuries. My cat is Flossie, and she's a year old, and she's black all over. She often brings back mice and birds and things that she finds in the fields. She's a little ninja. <laughs> we were really surprised at how far he actually travels um, because he goes onto other streets. Um, I don't know how he gets out because it's like just a big sort of row of houses in like a circle. One of the things about the cat cam is we can see how they're marking out their range. We can also see how they interrelate to each other. And one of the most fun bits that we've been able to find is two cats living together, one called Jasper. And he's got his cat cam and he is walking up towards the other cat living in a nice suburban garden. He sees the other cat. They don't get too close because they're little shy. And what we see is when their eyes lock, a blink, a big heavy blink. It's a reassurance signal. If you're looking back on Victorian housing, which a lot of people in Britain live in, you know, that terrace type of housing that goes around and doesn't leave much space for many gardens. Well, in this sort of space, how much is there for the cats? Depends on your sex. One of our hero cats that we followed with the GPS was one called Maxwell, living in these sort of conditions. And what we found is he hopped from one garden to another garden to another garden to another garden because he's male and males have a larger area. Females, there was one called Zilla in almost the same circumstances as this, and she had a tiny little range. The male will always go over to a bigger area and the female will have a small area. We always see Morton just sat in the garden not moving very far and it was really quite significant because he had actually crossed two or three fields in the farm and gone over to the farm buildings He'd visited neighbours' gardens. He'd gone quite a lot further in the front of the house than we imagined. Maxwell has never caught any animals, so we, I mean, not that we know of anyway. He's never brought any back. Um, but he does like rummage around in bins and he does, you know, he has had fleas, so I know he can catch sort of worms from eating an infected flea. He's killed squirrels and brought them in through the cat flap, which is quite an achievement. Um, haven't you said? She brings in birds and mice every day. She brought two in the other day, in one, like two mice in one go, and left them in the kitchen for us. So if you're a town cat, you're really not as exposed to the risks in terms of parasites that you're going to end up in your gut, worms that might end up there. You're going to need treatment 
once every three months. But if you're out there hunting actively, you really need it once a month. And because technology has changed, it's so much easier now to use a spot-on treatment. So you can make your life easier and also allow your cat to thoroughly enjoy itself in the outside world. But if you have any concerns, of course, get your spot-on treatment from your vets. And if you have any worries, discuss it with your vet. Flossy obviously goes out and about in the countryside a lot, so um, I like to de-flea her and worm her once a month, um, just because she's out in the countryside and I know there's a lot of parasites and bugs and things and I don't want her to catch anything. You can find out more by going and looking at the Secret Lives of Cat report, where you'll be able to see the ranges, be able to see a lot more data as well. And if you have any questions, of course, relating to your cat's health, always check it out with your vet.